I'm going to continue my series of, um, of demonstrations of the materials from my Etudes book. Here you go. Here's the cover. Etudes. Rock and Blues Field Jam Etudes. I'm going to do D minor today. By request, I'm going to do the whole um, level. I'm not just going to give a promotional um, excerpts. I'm going to do the whole D minor level. This is page 53 in the book, if you have the book. And uh, you can play along. I'm going to do call and answer. I'm going to do one riff, and you can try it back. And I'll go to the next riff and, call, and try that back. The first page of the D minor stuff, I'll bring my computer around, is the actual fingering chart. And how well this will transfer the, to the camera. But it actually has um, all the notes, the easy zone in the box, the blue notes in blue, actually. And in the book, you can see that. Um, we've got one page here. And I'll start. Now, to use this material, it, it, the, the level one is for clo near beginner, close to beginner. If you can read, it would be helpful. If you're even a more advanced person and you want to just play along by ear with these things, this is good. In this video, I'm going to do just a level one. I'll do a separate video for level two, separately for level three, and I will play the groove two. There's four pages in every um, in every lesson on this book, so in every key rather. So first, in every uh, um, in every exercise, every key, I run to the scale first. It's not the main event, but just want to let you get to know the notes we'll be using. So. There's the actual blues scale in the easy zone. It's uh, open B, low to F, G3, open A, low to C, and D. If you can do that, you can do most of this level one. Try it again. It's okay to slide a little bit. And it's, notice it's the same finger on both the strings. Open, low, two, three, open, low, two, three, on the D strings and the A strings. Doesn't matter if you're a cellist, violist, violinist, mandolin player, um, you can do this too. The second me measure is down the scale. Try that again. Third measure and, and uh, up to the sixth measure, I go to the whole first position. Now, if you can't do this right away, that's okay. You can skip this for the moment. Uh, it's something to just practice and know. I'll play it all. That's the first half. I'll do that again. Uh, this is now the theory behind this, the theory, mechanics of this, is D, F, G, a C, nothing but D F A uh, D F G A C is everywhere. So it's a D C A G A C D F G A C D F G A, and back down. That's A G low one F D C. That's all the notes we'll be using. Now let's dig in. In measure seven, we start with single string riffs. This is where we'll begin, actually. I'm going to play one measure. You can try and play back. Now, if you can't quite play back by ear, that's cool. Let's do something similar. Do at least copy the rhythm with me. I'm going to go slow, and I'm going to do one at a time. You can stop the video and rewind it anytime you want. So let's do it. Two. Next one, me, G, U. Next measure, A, C, U. Me, D, U. Get it? G string. U. U. Crossing strings. D. A. A. U. Measure 
16. doing so far. Now I noticed a misprint in the book. Actually, I didn't do double bars on, on that cross string section. Uh, that's okay, I guess. Small, small mistake. I apologize. Um, then we get into some easy licks. Now those were kind of licks too, but these are a little more musical sounding, not just running through the scale. So here I am in measure 21 on page 53 in my book. Um, and it's D, C, F, you try. Next measure, same stuff. Down to G. U. Me. A. C, U. U. Okay, measure 25 on the A string. Low one. It's a cool riff. Next one. Triple left. G. A. More triplets. That's a good riff. Try it. 16th notes. On the E string. Then we get into some patterns. And every lesson on level one has this stuff. I run through the scale. I do some easy stuff, crossing the strings, if you're, quite, if you're near a beginner. And then uh, I get into some riffs and tricks. And then we do some patterns, because it's good to have fingering patterns so you get to see the whole way across the fingerboard. And you get to uh, kind of memorize this key, which will come up. Uh, D blues is a popular key. Uh, let's see here. Anything open string based and fiddle is popular. Let's see, patterns will run up three and go back one up one more note, up the next three, go back with one more note, up the next three. You'll see what I mean. So that's all the D, F's, A's, D's, F's, G's, A's, C's, all across the first position of the fiddle. So it starts on the G string. And then C, D, F, G, A, C, D, F, That was four measures. Just try it with me if you can. If you're getting it, you could be able to maybe gather by ear. I'll call out the beginning uh, letters again. So this is going up, and then after this we'll go down. So all D's, F's, G's, A, C's, starting with open G. So the first three, G, A, C. A, C, D, F. You can't get it exactly with me. That's a long string of notes. Um, that's the stuff you'll need to work towards and, and practice. Um, so, and the last line of this of this level is going down. I'll play it once. Going down three and starting then one, uh, one lower. Going down the next three. Go down one lower. Down the next three. So it's all right. I'll play it solo. So starting on the E string on the A note, the third finger. G. D, C, A, G, F, D, C. So there you have it.
have it. Try it with me. Ready? Go. G. F. D. C. A. G. So now I actually was playing that uh, with the wrong accents. You could do it too, but um, I played it almost as triplets there. One, two, three, one, two, three. I actually wrote it purposely without the triplets. I wrote it in eighth notes so that it would mess the accents up. I'll play that last line again with the proper accents. It has a three note pattern but a two two note beat. So I can think it's good to mess with the, your brain on that a little bit. So there you have it. That is the first level of the D minor exercises in the book from page 50, actually 54. Uh, in the book, the Fiddle Jam, Rock and Blues Fiddle Jam Etudes. It's a bit dry stuff just to go by it like that, but to go through it like that. But um, the book's 20 bucks if you want it, get it. It's I think it's a good book. I wrote it. <laughs> And uh, it answers the question, as the whole book does, of the, the second most uh, important, uh, the most common question I get when I try and teach people to jam on blues or, or jazz or fiddling music or alternative styles in general, is I don't know what to play. The answer always, of course, is listen inside, relax, and try and imagine what you'd like to hear and try and play that the best you can. If you can't get the exact note, try at least get the rhythms. Um, that's the magic of being a good creator and a good jammer. But... Um, I had to go back in my own development as, as a jamming violinist to realize, okay, I listened to a lot of jazz saxophone players and guitarists and you know jazz fusion I was into in the 70s and, and early 80s, and I developed an inner vocabulary of what I wanted to hear. So maybe you don't have that luxury at this point. Maybe you haven't heard of jazz fusion even. I don't know. Um, but uh, this can definitely, having learned some licks and tricks that fit on the fiddle, I had to kind of figure this stuff out for myself over the years. And it was very developmental for me, but um, this can help you get a vocabulary of licks and tricks to do, and they'll come out in your jamming. They'll just kind of, when you're you practicing enough, with their no-brainer to your muscles, just muscle memory. They'll they'll help you, uh, you know, sound good on the cool stuff. That's what this is for. All right, hope that helped. I'm going to go on to level two next. <laughs>